In this unit, we're going to be looking at oxygen, how to check it and how to apply it in an emergency situation. There are a variety of cylinders out there, different sizes, different manufacturers, and they do require slightly different interventions when using them. The one we're going to look at today is the BOC size CD. This is a fairly common size for emergency use. This particular cylinder has what is known as a live gauge. That means to say that it will always show how much oxygen is in the cylinder, whether switched on or not. Therefore, in order to check this type, all you need to do is look at the gauge. As long as it's in the green, everything is fine. Once it hits the white, that's three quarters full and downwards, it's time to start thinking about getting it replaced. Of course, if you're using it and it hits the white, continue using it until it's empty. To use this cylinder, you would connect your oxygen delivery device to the port at this point on the cylinder. Open the valve and it shows which way to go. One turn of the wrist is really all that's needed. You may or may not hear a click as the oxygen flows into the head area. Then decide on the flow rate. And this is done by turning the dial at the head here. And as the flow increases, you can hear the noise getting stronger. This one goes up to 15 litres. You should not need more than 15 litres. When finished, put it back to zero. Close the valve. And to prepare it for the next use, run through the small amount of oxygen that's left in the head. And that's it now, ready for the next use. Just check that there's plenty of oxygen left. When you take the mask out of the bag, you'll find it's all wound up. And it can be a bit of a problem sometimes to unwind it. Just take your time and you'll get there much more quickly. You'll see on most masks that there are two valves, one on the inside and one on the outside, and this allows mostly a one-way flow of oxygen. Some masks will have more valves, some masks may have fewer. The flow rate in an emergency would normally be between 10 and 15 litres per minute, but you can gauge the amount of oxygen that the patient needs by looking at the reservoir bag in the oxygen mask. As the patient breathes, the bag will deflate and then will refill with oxygen. When using an oxygen cylinder, you can see how wobbly it can be. You should either be holding on to it when you're setting it up or lay it down flat so that it can't fall any further. Never have it up on a work surface. If it falls down, it's likely to cause damage to the cylinder as well as any toes it happens to fall upon. If you have a cradle for your cylinder, it should always be used. Connecting this end to the oxygen, gently but firmly push and twist onto the port of the oxygen. Then open the valve as before, and then turn on fully allowing the oxygen to flow into the mask. Over time, the bag will inflate. However, if you flatten it out and put your finger on the inner valve, you'll see how it inflates much more quickly. It's now ready to be placed onto the patient. When you place it on the patient and the patient breathes, you'll see that the bag deflates and then reinflates with oxygen. The ideal flow rate for the patient will be where the bag moves but does not get completely empty. At the moment it's sitting on 15 and I'm going to turn it down step by step so you can see how the bag reacts.
As you can see, once it reached eight liters per minute, the bag completely deflated and I was just breathing what air was left in the mask. So the lowest level that was suitable for me was in fact 10 litres. Some patients may require more than that and you should always gauge this uh, alongside the pulse oximetry if you have access to it or in some cases the blood gas analysis. Keep an eye on the reservoir bag. If you find it's becoming deflated you will need more oxygen flow so turn it up and then reassess. If you find it's hardly moving, turn it down so you don't waste your oxygen. It's also worth checking that the patient is in fact still breathing.